The end of October 1968 was foul. Low clouds stood over the testing airdrome of Zhukovsky. Phone calls kept coming from the Ministry. The aircraft must take off before the new year. It was no accident. It was not just another new aircraft. It was supposed to be the debut of the supersonic airliner TU-144. The Anglo-French Concorde was getting ready for its first flight at the same time. It was important to be the first. Prestige of the Soviet state was at stake. On December 31, the last day of the year, TU-144 took off. It was that aircraft which entered the history as the first in the world supersonic airliner. Civil aviation was in transition to a new quality level. Civil aircraft. Wings over continents. The supersonic TU-144 passenger aircraft deserves a special story. The Soviet leadership insisted on producing such an aircraft. Nobody counted the costs. It was not just an aircraft, but another symbol of progressing socialism. On the eve of 1969, some two months ahead of the Anglo-French Concorde, the crew of Edouard Yilian took the TU-144 prototype into the sky. Tests started. Half a year later, the aircraft exceeded the speed of the sound. A year after, the double sonic speed was reached and on July 15, 1970, the aircraft arrived at its maximum speed of 2,443 kilometers per hour. Upon results of the tests, the layout of the second copy of the aircraft underwent so many changes that it became a completely new aircraft. The outlook changed radically. The wing, the landing gear, the engine's arrangement, everything was different. Folding wings appeared in the front part of the fuselage facilitating the aircraft balance at takeoff and landing. Such TU-144 was attended to flights in July 1971. Tests started from the beginning. The volume of free developments was enormous, but the aircraft designers believed in success. TU-144 flies day and night. It is easy and comfortable in control. This has been checked and proved. There is an onboard computer, automatic units helping not only to keep the course, but to choose the optimum cruising altitude and landing mode. However, the catastrophe occurred in summer of 1973 at Le Bourget kicked the program off the schedule. But the schedule was never suspended. The country's leadership ordered to put the aircraft in service. While there was another great problem to be resolved. The aircraft's engines, due to their excessive fuel consumption, did not provide for the assigned flight range. Initially, TU-144 was being prepared to fly from Moscow to Khabarovsk. Instead, a shorter route to Almaty was chosen. After operating tests when TU-144 was carrying cargoes and mail, the day of the first passenger flight came. It was set on November 1, 1977, on the eve of the Jubilee of the October Revolution. From that time on, the supersonic 150-seat airliner was flying to the capital of Kazakhstan. The airfare was slightly higher than the average.
Tests continued with respect to the third variant of the aircraft with new, more efficient engines. One of such flights ended up in a heavy accident. It was the end of the supersonic passenger airliner's career. Tests still continued for several years when in 1983 the program was finally closed. The most probable reason was the political and economic crisis of the socialist system while the flight accident served as a formal cause. The Concorde started their commercial flights in January 1976. Throughout, for more than 20 years, they transported over 4 million passengers. In the 80s, operations of those supersonic aircraft were stable and profitable. Concorde was famous for its reliability and only by the end of its career it was darkened by the only accident. Interesting to mention that the American Boeing Company also performed calculations of a supersonic airliner. However, the topic was considered to be non-perspective and all the efforts were thrown to the creation of a wide-body aircraft. 